The key to making a good selection is to not get locked into one particular tool to do the entire job. Using a dynamic set of tools in unison will give you a really great selection. And that's why in Photoshop, there are so many different tools that are meant to be used together, like the Marquee Tool, the Lasso Tool, the Quick Select Tool, the Magic Wand, and even up here under Select, there's things like Color Range that will give you a selection as well. So there are selection tools embedded all over the place in Photoshop. And to become really good at this, you just have to learn how to combine them in dynamic ways. So I'm going to start with the quick selection tool located underneath the magic wand. And in this case, sometimes this tool can be a nightmare because if you have uh, any kind of intricacy around the edge of your image, you can end up with a really jagged, ch chopped out selection. So you have to be careful. Otherwise, in this case, it's going to make my life really easy. Because there's such a drop off in luminosity between the white of the egg and the shadow surrounding the egg, all I have to do is just click on a general hue within this egg and you can see that the tool just slides out to the edge. I'm not even dragging, I'm just clicking. And it just seeks the darker, to, it just goes right to the darker edge. So that was amazing, no problem. Um, so now I'm going to turn this into a layer mask. My image says background, so I need to change that layer so I'm going to double click and call it eggs so that I can apply a layer mask to it. And I'll click on the icon for layer mask in the panel and add a layer mask. So just to review, this is, this is my mask that's holding, black is holding back all the other eggs in the carton and the white is letting the egg show through. And without that mask, the eggs are still there all 18 of them, but I've just selected six. So we can go in and take a look at this selection. And in fact, I think what I'll do is put in a new layer. That's this icon right here, right next to the trash can in the layer mask. I mean in the layer panel and move it underneath the eggs. And I'm just gonna fill it with white and have a temporary white layer back there. On a Mac, you do this, the shortcut, you can go into Edit Fill and fill with white, but the shortcut is Command Delete, and that fills with whatever my background color is. In this case, I had white as my background color, so that works out fine. So now it makes it look even worse because I can see all the problems here. So I'm going to go back to my mask and I'm looking now at the mask panel. And I'm going to try and refine the edges here by going to mask edge. Now this is not the only place that you find this, um, this menu. It also, when it's active, is located up here when you have any of the selection tools on. Also, under the menu Select, which is actually quite a fascinating little menu here, um, Refine Edge is also located here. And so that um, Refining Your Mask Edge has, has been available in Photoshop for a long time, and now it's under this mask palette. So if you're used to using that, or any of the other ones, um, you want to navigate toward refining your mask. Now, when I look at this image, first of all, I, I'm preferring to look at it on a white background so I can see that dark shadow. But you can also look at just the mask itself, and sometimes that's helpful. Um, we were on the white. This one will give you a black background, which in this case doesn't help at all. And this one gives us quick mask mode, which I'll talk about a little later in this video. And this one gives you marching ants around your image. And for now, that's not so helpful because I really want to 
key into where the darkness is coming from around the image. So I'm sticking with white and I'm going to go to this slider right here which is either contract or expand my selection. So in this case I actually want to pull that selection in so I can get rid of some of the darkness around there. So when I do that, even at 100%, I'm not losing this little bit of darkness right on that one particular egg. So I have a problem. And if I was locked into just using these two things, I wouldn't be able to make a good selection. I might just let that slide. But not in my class. That won't slide. So I'm going to cancel this and come back to that later. And now I just want to take a look at how I can refine that edge right there. So what I'm going to do is use the quick mask mode, which is a great way. It works very much like a layer mask and it's a great way to kind of just do minor touch-ups within a selection. So the first thing I have to do is retrieve a selection or the original selection because quick mask mode won't work unless you have a selection already in progress. So I'm going to come back up here and get this selection from my layer mask. Now this is a great little trick. If you have transparency or a layer mask and you want to turn that into a selection, you'll have to write this one down to remember it. Hold down the command key on a Mac and click right on your layer mask. And when I did that, so I held down command, clicked on the layer mask, and it brought up my marching ants again. So it basically retrieved my selection. Then I'm going to go into quick mask mode. That is located way down here at the bottom of the tool panel or the toolbox underneath your foreground background colors. When you click on it, don't be surprised, it turns into this reddish color. Um, you can change the color at any time. You can just double click and you will get the option to change the color and even the opacity of the color. Um, you just click on color. It allows you to choose a different color. Why, you may ask, would that be important? Well, let's say these were on a red background and red was the color we were trying to get rid of. This would I'd make it impossible to see what you're doing. So that's why you have the option to change the color. This color is based on an old photographic technique called ruby lith, where you actually cut out red material, transparent material, to mask off a photographic image. So not that you need to know that, but it's a fascinating little factoid. So now this quick mask mode is going to work pretty much like layer mask and so I'll just go on the brush tool and by the way I do not notice notice I'm not even on my layer mask so even though it works like layer mask it's not a layer mask it's a temporary mode that allows you to put this red masking on and so in this case I'm gonna paint and I'm painting with black. Notice down here in the toolbox, I'm painting with black. But the black is laying down red as a masking material. Might soften this brush a little. So I'm trying to be careful not to like put a dent in this egg so it looks weird. Um, I don't know how I'm doing. See, this is what I mean about eye-hand coordination. Look what a poor job I'm doing here. Okay, so let's say I get that. I'm going to hit the X key to go back to white because I want to fix. I think I got a little too bumpy here. Okay, now the reason it's looking darker actually is not because I'm painting with anything darker. I'm going to hit X again. It's because this paint is actually hitting that shadow area. So it really is the same tone as the rest. It's actually letting me see that that's what I'm covering up. So you can see that I'm taking away most of that black and it really takes a steady hand to get that. I did a so-so job there. 
Um, but now that you can see that I've masked that off, um, now I'm going to get out of Quick Mask. So I will click back. And what it does is it now gives me the marching ants again. So what I have is a new selection that's tighter just around that one spot. I want to go back to my mask and there's many ways that you could do this. Um, but a way that I, a real easy way to do it is to select inverse. So right now I have the eggs and let me zoom out so you could see this. Um, I'm going to go under select and go to inverse and you'll notice, okay, it's not a drastic change, but you'll notice that the marching ants are around the outside and they're around the egg. What that means is that I've actually selected the white part. Let me undo that so you can see the difference. This is the eggs and there's no marching ants around the outside and then I'll undo that. Now there's the marching ants around the outside. So that tells me that I've selected the opposite of the eggs. I've actually selected all the outside area which will then as you can see allow me to fill in this little part right here with the color that will mask that out. What color would that be? I hope you're thinking black and not white. So there's a couple ways I could do this. One, that selection will just hold back my brush so I can actually just paint. I'm not even trying to stay in the lines. That's actually, I just painted with black right there while I was on the layer mask. Very important. Don't want to be on the eggs. I'm on the layer mask. So I just painted with black. If I had a much bigger selection, I might actually go to edit, fill, fill with black and nothing happened because I already painted with black, but whatever was on the outside would then be blocked in my mask. So now I've cleaned that up as much as I can. I'm going to deselect this by holding down command D and now we'll still look at this and now would be a good time to go into that refine edge. So I'm going to go to my mask edge, refine my mask and this time I think if I contract, I don't know if you can see this because my panels in the way there. But if I contract, it's really starting to pull this in nicely. I can also feather just a teeny bit or rather than feather, use this new one radius. Just gives you a soft edge there. And that's it. So now I've used pretty much three tools to clean up this half a dozen eggs. And so each selection should be kind of that free flowing, let's try this, maybe I'll try something else. Um, that it should be sort of a cocktail of, of selection tools. Try it.